All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at vector line integrals. And that's where we integrate a vector field uh, along a curve. Here, we're looking at two-dimensional case, but most of this could be generalized to three dimensions. Uh, or all of it could be. And uh, the vector field we're looking at has first component function e to the x and second component function e to the y. And the curve that we are integrating over is portion of the ellipse centered at the origin from the point 0, 1 to the point 6, 0. Um, now we might want to spend a little bit of time uh, looking at a graph of this first as sort of a step 0. Um, and Uh, you might recall that the general formula for an ellipse is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared, where a and b are the radii in the horizontal and vertical directions. So this is the ellipse, um, though this traces out the full ellipse. And of course, we want a parameterization. So in general, the parameterization uh, would have first component uh, A cosine of T, B sine of T. And if we traced from 0 to 2 pi, we would get the full ellipse, right? Um, Wanting just that uh, quarter in the top right in quadrant one, we would just go from zero to pi over two. Um, now, the problem with that is it traces it in the wrong direction, right? It actually starts right there at six, zero. That's when t equals zero. And then ends right here at, at zero, one, when t equals pi over two. Uh, and you remember that it says to go from 0, 1, which is the top, to 6, 0. So we actually want to go in the opposite direction. Um, so there's a couple of different ways to do that, changing things. Um, the way I've decided to do it is to use a different parameterization. If we switch uh, the first component from cosine to sine, and then the second component from sine to cosine, um, that will actually trace it uh, in the opposite direction. Um, so again, it appears the same here, um, but now we are starting right here with t equals zero and ending right there with t equals pi over two. And so it's tracing it along in the right direction. Um, so not only does, with these vector line integrals, do you need to parameterize the right curve, but you need to have the direction going the right way. Otherwise, you get the opposite value for your integral. Uh, so that gives us our parameterization uh, for step one. So there's the parameterization function r, and then the interval is 0 to pi over 2. And so remember that this will represent x, and that'll represent y, that'll be a, and that'll be b. All right, in step two, we find the derivative of that parameterization, so r prime of t. So just take the derivative of each component function. Derivative of 6 sine theta is 6 cosine not theta, 6 sine t is 6 cosine t, and the derivative of cosine t is negative sine t. All right. Uh, next up, we're going to substitute in the components of r into the function f uh, to get f in terms of the parameter t. So what you'd want to do is, um, if you have an x, right, that'll get replaced with x, and if you have a y, 
that'll get replaced with y. So the first component of R, the parameterization, uh, will replace x, and then the second will replace y. So the vector field as a function of t uh, be e to the x, which is e to the 6 sine t. So make sure you're using the parameterization from step one, not the derivative in step two. Uh, and then uh, e to the y, which is e to the cosine t. Uh, next up, you want to take the dot product of that vector field in step three with the derivative in step two, right? So dot product of f with r prime. Um, now, these are kind of set up to do this, right? Where with dot product, we multiply component-wise, and then we add those results. Uh, remember that uh, the result of the dot product is not a vector. Um, it's going to be a scalar. So multiplying those first components, well, we get 6 cosine t e to the 6 sine t. And then we add that to the product of the second components, uh, which is negative sine t e to the cosine t. So that will be our integrand. Um, and in step five, we will integrate that from A to B. Remember, A and B were defined in step one. Uh, A is zero and B is pi over two. And you just integrate F dot R prime. So in three dimensions, this is a little different, right? R has three components. Um, R prime has three components. F has three components. So use the third component function of R to replace any Zs in your vector field f, if that's the case. You still only have uh, one variable in this integral, and that's your parameter t. Until we get to surface integrals, then we'll have uh, two parameter variables. All right, so integrating this, um, the antiderivatives here are pretty straightforward. The antiderivative of the first term uh, is just e to the 6 sine t. Right. So take the derivative of that, you get back the e to the 6 sine t, and then you get the chain rule effect, which is the derivative of the exponent, which is 6 cosine t, giving you 6 cosine t e to the 6 sine t. Um, and then very similarly for uh, the second term, uh, the antiderivative is e to the cosine t. Taking the derivative of that, you get e to the cosine t times negative sine t. Then you just evaluate the antiderivative at the limits of integration, uh, top minus bottom. And uh, at pi over 2, uh, sine of pi over 2 is 1. So we get e to the 6. Uh, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And so e to the 0 is 1. So those are the that's the value of the antiderivative at pi over 2. Uh, subtracting the value at 0, sine of 0 is 0. So you get a 1 here. And then cosine of 0 is 1, and so you get an e there. Uh, when you simplify that, you get e to the 6 minus e. And that's our exact answer, approximately. That is e to the 6 minus e to the 1. It's about 401. And uh, we're now going to validate this by producing a graph of the vector field uh, along with the curve. So for that, we're going to go over to Python. Um, let's clear this out. But that e to the 6 minus e should be our result. And to plot the vector field, we'll use a, a mesh grid of points. Um, here, remember, we want to include the quadrant one that includes this, this here. So I'm going to have x go from like 0 to 7 and y go from 0 to 1. Um, so x is going from 0 to 7, steps of a half. y is going from 0 to 1. I mean, we might want to just make that go steps of 1. And y goes from 0 to 1 in steps of 0.1. Um, and then here we put in our uh, component functions. So 
this should use NumPy prefixes NP um, for these any special functions. So e to the x would be np.exp of x. And then e to the y would be np.exp of y. So this defines that vector field f, right? First component function e to the x, second component function e to the y. Um, and then we use matplotlib to sort of initialize a, a plot. And then the vector field is plotted using the ax, ax.quiver command. So that'll plot the vector field. Uh, we also want to draw the curve C. Um, and so we'd want to um, create a function that would trace that out. Um, and so um, just going back to the relationship between x and y and solving for y as a function of x, um, x would go from 0 to 6, and then y uh, would be np.sqrt minus x1 squared over 6. Right, so in case it's not clear where that's coming from, um, the ellipse, you recall, it's this, right? That's the the implicit equation for the ellipse. And if you just solve that for y, right, you get you get that. Um, and we just take the positive square root, um, and then that's what we have right there. And if you let x go from 0 to 6, you get just the top right of it. All right, and then we plot the curve C. And, uh, and then I have it here kind of limiting the output to y to going from 0 to 1, and then displaying the graph. Now, it doesn't draw the direction on here, but you do want to think about the direction going along the curve here. And you want to think about what this vector line integral is, right? We're looking at the dot product uh, of the vector moving along the curve with the vectors in the vector field, right? And so that dot product is going to be maximized when those vectors are headed in the same direction, right? When you're going with the flow. So you're moving along this ellipse and you want to think of the effect of that vector field, be it a velocity field or electric field or whatnot. And if you're moving in the same direction as it, then you're going to get a, a large contribution from the vector field. If you're moving in the opposite direction, you get a negative contribution and you're moving at a right angle to it. Well, then it's going to be zero contribution because at right angle, the dot product is zero. So what does this tell us? Well, we are going to the right and down as we move along the ellipse. Um, but any contribution of going down is going to be nullified um, because that's at a right angle to the vector field. The vector field is entirely looking like it's going to the right. Um, now, if you look at the vector field, you know it's not just horizontal, right? It's e to the x and the horizontal e to the y in the vertical. But because of where we're at, where x is going out to 6 and y is still less than 1, um, the horizontal is so much bigger than the vertical that effectively the vector field is, is acting like a horizontal vector field. So that, that vertical contribution is almost negligible. Um, and so because of that, any movement up and down on this curve is going to have zero contribution. Um, now, the left-right movement isn't, and we're moving to the right which is the same direction as that. Um, and so we're going to get a positive result, which we know we got a positive result, um, but also a rather large result, right? Since you can see um, e to the x is a rather large amount, e to the 5. Uh, remember, these vectors don't come out to scale, um, but, but these vectors here, right, they would be e to the 5, you know, and then e to the y, which varies uh, from, uh, from 1 to e. So very, very large horizontal contribution. And so when you are right here, again, there's a, a part of this that's moving to the right and a part that's moving down. And the down part has zero contribution, but when we're moving to the right, 
um, that's moving along with a very large or very strong high magnitude horizontal vector field. Um, and so it's going to have a very large contribution. So the graph, along with an analysis, suggests that not only should the result be positive, but it should be quite large, um, which does agree with our result. You remember our result was e to the sixth minus e to the one, which is around 400. Um, so you, with your validation, it's, it's a bit qualitative. You are looking for whether it's uh, positive versus negative or zero, but also you can kind of quantify uh, in the ballpark, should it be large or small, uh, based on the relationship between the movement along the curve and the vector field's direction and magnitude. Um, and of course, you could use Python to calculate all the calculus stuff we did as well, another way to check. Um, but I feel like this analysis is more helpful for understanding what's happening with uh, these vector fields. Uh, all right, that is going to do it for uh, vector line integral um, and for this video.